I'm Ellis Martin. Join me now for a conversation with Adam Smith, co-founder and vice president of business development for Oroco Resource Corp., a public mineral exploration company trading on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol OCO and in the U.S. on the OTCQB market under the symbol ORRCF. Oroco is focused on the development of a large copper deposit in a Santo Tomas project in coastal northwest Mexico. Santo Tomas hosts a multi-billion pound copper resource defined by historical drilling and currently being confirmed by ongoing exploration drilling by Oroco. Copper mineralization at Santo Tomas is located at surface and therefore potentially amenable to low-cost mining methods. It's very well located with respect to the infrastructure that's essential to a large mining operation and Mexico is among the world's top mining jurisdictions with laws and trade agreements that protect the rights of mining companies. Since commencing exploration and resource definition at Santo Tomas three years ago, Oroco has made a series of rapid advances, and the year ahead is rich with catalysts, such as a formal resource definition and economic evaluation, each of which carries the possibility of a company valuation re-rating. These milestones will be achieved against the backdrop of a positive forecast for the price of copper, possibly to historical highs, as a result of dramatic shifts in metals' importance to industrial and consumer markets. Adam, welcome back to the program. It's always great to visit with you, my friend. Thank you, Ellis. Appreciate the opportunity to speak through you to the investment community and to talk about the recent advances at Oroco's Santa Tomas Copper Project. I saw that you just published a technical report, 43101. I didn't see the details of it. Would you enlighten me and our audience as to what it states? In early May, Oroco announced the results of a resource estimate calculation at its Santa Tomas Copper Project. That resource, in sum total, I guess, is at 8.5 billion pounds of contained copper and equivalent gold, silver, and molybdenum. That resource, 8.5 billion pounds at today's copper price, has a gross metal value in excess of $32 billion. So a very significant resource, one that establishes Santa Tomas as one of the largest new copper resources defined in the last few years. The discovery and the definition of new copper resources over the last generation has dropped dramatically. There were very, very few large new copper resources defined over the last five years in a trend that started in the 1990s and continues to today that has has seen the discovery of new copper resources drop precipitously. With a resource of that size, and as I recall, you just spoke the number $32 billion in value. Is that not a region maker, a country maker with regard to copper, although Mexico is quite heavily involved in copper and gold? And what do you do with a resource like that? How long do you continue to develop it before you potentially pass it on to a major? Because I don't think you necessarily want to be a producer, do you? Well, the goal of our first phase of drilling at Santa Tomas was to define a resource, a copper resource, that supported a minimum of a 20-year mine life. If you divide that 8.5 billion ton resource by 20 years, you can see that this is a deposit capable of producing hundreds of millions of pounds of copper per year. At today's copper prices, this resource is capable of revenue of greater than a billion dollars per year and for a couple of decades. A subsequent phase of drilling at Santa Tomas will follow up on our final holes, which were some of the best in the program, and show that the resource remains open to expand expansion in a number of directions. So phase one was successful in defining a very, very large resource. By some definitions, you could call this a tier one copper asset. One of those large assets that major mining companies covet, they produce, in some cases, tens of billions of dollars of revenue over their life. They last over multiple copper price cycles and commodity price cycles, and they produce steady revenues and they produce metal at low cost. So I think our first phase of drilling has been an unqualified success. The fact that it ended on some of the best holes of the program and shows that expansion is probable at Santa Tomas is a positive. And we will continue to expand in a second phase of drilling at Santa Tomas. But right now, we are focusing on the preliminary economic assessment at Santa Tomas that takes into account capital expenditures to put the deposit into production, operating expenditures, the relevant price of copper, and produces metrics like a net present value, that's the net present value of future cash flows of an operation at Santa Tomas. It will generate an internal rate of return showing a potential mind builder what uh, Santa Tomas is capable of in terms of return on their investment and other metrics. Let me interrupt you for just a minute, Adam. So at that point, then do you talk to folks like Rio Tinto as a potential equity partner? Why wouldn't you involve them at that point? In my opinion, and I'm not as educated as you are about it, that you have enough right now to appeal to a major to come in and help you make that discovery along with them. So what's keeping you from doing so? If you don't mind the question. I don't mind it at all, Ellis. Thank you. The results of the PEA will define the opportunity at Santa Tomas. 
It will demonstrate the viability of the project and show the potential investor, whether that somebody buying stock in the market, Barocco, or whether that's a company, as you mentioned, like one of the major mining companies who are looking for assets like this. It will help for them to find the opportunity at Santa Tomas. Our current market cap is approximately 170 million Canadian dollars. The results of the PEA will contain net present value and other metrics, which will allow investors to understand the true value of Santa Tomas. I would expect the net present value will be multiples of the current market cap. So not only will that incentivize investors to look at the company, it will potentially incentivize major mining companies to come and speak to us. And I can say that the world's big mining companies all have very well-functioning business development departments. It is part of their job. The playing field understand potential new sources of production, potential acquisitions. And they've all done a good job of speaking to us and keeping up to date with progress at Santa Tomas. Well, that's not to say we are in talks with anybody in terms of selling the company, but the world's big mining companies are keeping up to date with what is going on at Santa Tomas. And following the publication of the preliminary economic assessment, I would expect they would have more data points from which to assess this project as a potential investment. Well, I can't disagree with that logic at all. It certainly makes sense to have that PEA done before you even take it any further with either courting the majors or them courting you, which often happens because they do pay attention once those PEAs are published. So when will that get done? (laughs) And I'm asking as a shareholder would, as a longtime shareholder would, you know, when will that be done? Well, if you're looking at this for the appreciation of the shares. We can't predict that. With the resource estimate published in May, the technical team turned their focus to the completion of a preliminary economic assessment. It's going well. We have previously stated that uh, we expect it to be complete before the end of the third quarter, so before the end of August or September, and I think that guidance is accurate. I've known you about 17 years, Adam, and you've only been with this one company, Oroco Resource Corporation, and that's pretty unusual usual in the space, especially in Vancouver. People change companies, they change hats, they change positions, they change policy, they change everything. You're a one company man, Adam. Oroco was started in 2006 to develop the Cerro Prieto gold and silver mine in Sonora State, Mexico. We went public in 2008. By 2013, we had defined a resource. We had permitted that project, acquired surface rights, water rights, basically had Cerro Prieto at a turnkey stage. Along came a buyer and we were able to sell that project. That was a successful exit. As we were in the process of selling Cerro Prieto to Gold Group, we were working on a land assembly process for the Santa Tomas project. The rightful owner to Santa Tomas had approached us, asked for our help in assembling the concession ownership and concession titles. And we knew at the time that this was a very, very large copper deposit. It was multiples the size of our Cerro Prieto project. It was one of the world's biggest copper resources. It had been drilled and defined as of the mid-1990s. Low copper prices and a legal title dispute at Santa Tomas had prevented any further work. So we understood this project to be a diamond in the rough. This was a project that had been drilled extensively. A very large copper resource had been defined at Santa Tomas. And we knew that the type of work that was necessary to get it back into the kind of state where you could finance and advance it was in our wheelhouse. So we did that in January of 2020. We concluded that process. And I think our timing was really terrific because as 2020 and 2021 started to roll out, it became apparent that the rate of discovery of new copper assets had declined precipitously, that copper was going to be a key material in the energy transition. And the momentum for copper has just increased since then. It is now recognized as the one essential metal in the energy transition. The energy transition, which involves renewable energy, electrification, is very copper intensive. There are forecasts the deficits between supply and demand by the end of this decade will be at historical levels, several times higher than the deficits from 2000 until 2013 that drove copper prices five or six times higher. So we started work at Santa Tomas just as the world started to become alive to the potential, the future potential for copper prices, and started to understand the shortage of new copper assets to be put in production to meet that demand. The world started to recognize the declining grade of existing copper mines and the forecast for future copper consumption and future copper production started to point to significantly higher prices in the sector. In an interview a couple of weeks ago, Citibank analyst and copper expert Max Layton stated that copper is the go-to investment of the energy transition and that in the coming two years, investors look set to pile into the copper market on an unprecedented scale. As the usage of copper in electric vehicles and renewable energy increases, the forecast supply of copper is not expected to keep up. Therefore, Mr. Layton, as well as a number of other analysts in the sector, believe that copper prices are on an inevitable path 
to significantly higher levels. And the value of assets like Santa Tomas will inevitably follow. And you're trading at quite a discount compared to some of the highs we first talked about about a year ago. And that's indicative of the market and the smartest investors that get the most return on their investment absolutely dive in in a market like this. Let's see how many of them there really are. Yeah, Sandra Tomas and Oroco caught investors' favor a couple of years ago. The recognition of the value of the historical work at Sandra Tomas increased greatly after our first couple of rounds of exploration. We demonstrated that the resource that was defined as of 1994 at Sandra Tomas looked to be accurate. And investors piled in. But over the last couple of years, with recession fears, with the slowdown in China, with COVID in particular, a couple of years ago, copper market has cooled. And it's interesting because even as the copper market has cooled, the inevitability of higher copper prices and higher copper demand has become more widely understood and more widely expected. So there's a great deal of pressure, if you will, building up behind the dam in terms of an awareness of increased copper demand and copper consumption, but a shortage of future copper supply. So the longer this goes on, the longer the circumstance goes on where investors are avoiding commodities, avoiding copper because of short-term problems in the market or short-term influences that have driven the, the price down, the more that future demand when it starts to hit is going to bite and the greater potential for price appreciation of copper metal itself, as well as those equities related to copper, like copper producers and copper developers like Oroco. We're just beginning summer right now. What does Oroco have planned for this season? Our technical team are currently focused on the completion of the preliminary economic assessment. That is, as I stated earlier, expected by the end of this quarter. Some hints as to what to expect from it could be contained in the mineral resource estimate that was published in May. One of the important figures in the mineral resource estimate is the cutoff grade. And the cutoff grade represents the estimated break-even costs of mining at Santa Tomas. That was stated as between 0.13 and 0.15 percent copper. And when compared to the average grade at Santa Tomas, that would suggest margins in excess of 60%. So I think investors can look at that document, they can look at the size of the resource, and they can understand the scope that that PEA will likely lay out. It will be a very large operation, likely a very high capex, but likely with very significant revenues of a type I would hope interest the market and show Santa Tomas to be one of the biggest new projects being developed by a junior miner company today. Beyond that, we're looking at a busy end of the year. We would hope to get a second phase of drilling underway at Santa Tomas to continue to define, to upgrade the resource and to expand the resource and prepare for future economic assessments at the project. And Ellis, you know me, I will continue to enthusiastically discuss and educate the future of copper as we're looking at a century, perhaps, of growth in copper use and growth in copper's importance. I agree with the statement made last year by Goldman Sachs that copper is the new oil, meaning economic activity the last century was driven by oil supply and demand. The next century will be driven by copper supply and demand as we decarbonize, as we shift to renewable energies, and as we electrify everything. Adam, you never disappoint. Thank you. Thanks, Ellis. I've been speaking with Adam Smith, co-founder and vice president of business development for Oroco Resource Corp. Oroco trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol OCO and in the U.S. on the OTCQB market under the ticker symbol ORRCF. Go to the company's website, orocoresourcecorp.com. For Adam Smith and Oroco Resource Corp., I'm Ellis Martin. Subscribe to the Ellis Martin Newsletter. It's free. Go to ellismartinreport.com and fill out the quick and easy pop-up form.